Welcome to the Grim Leftovers Show with Grimnir every Monday night at 7 p.m. Eastern on reallibertymedia.com and rlmradio.xyz. Yeah, 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 folks. This is Monday night. This is the Grim Leftovers Show. I am Grimnir. It is September 2nd, 2019. Welcome to episode 37 of the Grim Leftovers program. And I'd like to say hi and howdy and uh, all that fun stuff to all you folks out there uh, and all the various places you may be tuned in from. And you could be in a multitude of places, as I tell you every Monday night when I start the show. So welcome to those folks on freedomsnetwork.com, realliberty.org, rlmradio.xyz, our home site, reallibertymedia.com. Dot com, And if you're tuned in from internet radio or tuned in or the uh, Real Liberty Media Radio uh, application for your for your mobiles, welcome to you all as well. If you saw the tweets or you, you saw the thing over there on Minds or I don't know where all else it gets posted, but welcome to everybody out there listening. Uh, and it, it, it is going to be a fun little show, I hope. We got a bunch of stories lined up for you, as we always do. Uh, now, let me just say, before I get going here, on Friday was Grammy Mary's last Grammy's Rocket Chair show, at least for a while, probably for a while, maybe forever. We don't know. It's up to Grammy and what she wants to do, and we're going to miss Grammy dramatically. But yesterday, uh, was it yesterday? Yeah, I think yesterday. I found out that Mr. Flash Somebody, who does, in a perfect world, 20% off, and the dork table, will be retiring from radio. He didn't say probably for a while. He just said retiring from radio. So we'll be losing those three shows in addition to Grammy's two shows. So uh, it, it, it hurts a little bit to, to see the RLM radio schedule decreasing rather than increasing although we did recently a couple weeks ago pick up a new show from a couple guys named poopster and prince uh, that that do their show the power hour now on thursday evenings thursday night i guess uh, would be more proper since it's 11 p.m <laughs> so we got that one but if you know anybody that that wants to do a liberty-based radio show a non-status type radio show let me know, and we got we got lots of space on the old on the old schedule there on reallibertymedia.com. So come on over, jump on in, be part of the be be, be part of Real Liberty Media. We'd love to have you. Yeah, so we still got a lot of great shows though. We got we got this show of course, and then we got uh, we got we got we got the Poops from Prince. Yes, we got Vin E who will be uh, ending his summer vacation. Soon, soon enough. Uh, he's been doing a few shows throughout the summer, but overall throughout the summer, he's been taking it off. We still got the Freakers Ball, of course. Myself and Miss Moose Girl doing our show. It's a great show. Uh, I'll be on Sunday morning still spinning those blues for y'all, playing the trivia here in the chat. Hal Anthony, of course, uh, with Behind the Woodshed on Sunday afternoons. And then we always, uh, you know, you can always tune in to the Ocelli effect right here on reallibertymedia.com. It's on channel 14. Or you can just go right on over to ocelli.com and tune in that way. Either way, um, we could use more shows. So if you got one, if you got an idea, if you got a voice, you want to say something, we'd love to have you. <laughs> All right. Now, um, some of you may know, I, I think I mentioned it on the Frickers Ball uh, last week, or not, not this last Friday, but the one before that. That for my birthday, uh, I received from my sister a thing called an air fryer. Let me just say, that thing is awesome. I don't know if you ever had an air fryer, ever used an air fryer, but I've cooked a bunch of different stuff in there already, even though I've only had it like a week and a half. I mean, not, not even a week and a half, I guess. But yeah, man, you can cook all kinds of great stuff in there, boy. <laughs> it, it's terrific. It's terrific for... Uh, all that stuff. And you don't use all that oil, you know. You use a little bit of oil for uh, yeah, some things, but uh, everything doesn't need oil. But, uh, yeah. Yeah, man, I've cooked in there uh, a pork uh, a pork chops and a, and, a, and a beef pot roast kind of thing. 
Uh, French fries, yeah, French fries a couple times in there. Uh, did some bacon. Oh, you can cook bacon in there. Wow, really good. Anyway, <laughs> just saying, yeah, if you've never had, tried an air fryer or had an air fryer, man, I'll tell you, that's a great little thing to have. All right. Oh, garden update. Let me give you a little garden update. Uh, garden's doing okay, actually, for this late, late summer period. Uh, the watermelons, I got I got like three three watermelons coming in. And one of them is pretty, getting pretty good size now. Well, it's not, not quite ready to eat yet, of course. Uh, but um, it's getting there. It's growing. It's growing by leaps and bounds every day. I get more tomatoes every day. And so, yeah, there's some uh, interesting stuff. Cantaloupes. I got some cantaloupes coming in. Fun, 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 fun. <laughs> All right. Let's get to it, shall we? Oh, Vinny says he's back to full-time Fridays, mostly. So uh, yeah, yeah. Well, for for what it's worth. Uh, so yeah, that that'll 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 be good to have Vinny back there on Fridays. And you know the dork table. Although although Flash somebody is retiring from the radio, doesn't mean somebody else can't take take that mantle and and do the dork table. It was a fun show. It's a good way to you know for uh, Saturday mornings, Saturday afternoon, whatever, depending where you are. But uh, the dork table is just kind of fun, you know. People sit around and chat about uh, various topics. It's it's a cool program, uh, the dork table. And ah, hang on a second, now piece of dust or something. Anyway, uh, and it doesn't have to necessarily be called the dork table if you didn't want it to, but uh, hey, you know, has a fun name and it'd be good to keep that going. Even if it was not under Flash Somebody. Although Flash did a very good job of it. Okay, let's get it this going here, shall we? <laughs> going back, way back. Uh, well, this article was posted February 18th of 2018. However, originally posted August 17th of 2017 from the Free Thought Project, but now found here on the last American vagabond. Parents catch FBI in plot to force mentally ill son to be a right-wing terrorist. Yeah. The parent, excuse me, the parents of a severely mentally disabled man are speaking out on how the FBI groomed him as a right-wing terrorist knowing that he's paranoid and schizophrenic. It's become a near weekly occurrence. Somewhere in some state, the FBI will announce that they foiled yet another terrorist plot and saved lives. However, as the data shows, uh, the majority of these cases involve psychologically dim dis diminished patsies who've been entirely groomed, armed, and entrapped by FBI agents. Simply put, the FBI manufactures terror threats and then takes credit for stopping them. While, the, while, while many of these cases have garnered attention and been exposed in the alternative media, a recent case out of Oklahoma sets a new low, if that was even possible, yes, a new low for FBI and exposes how insidious these plots can be. Through the hundreds of foiled terrorist plots, quote unquote, the FBI has busted, quote unquote, over the years, many of them have been focused on the people of Middle Eastern descent or people associated with ISIS, which is a U.S. creation, U.S. and Israeli creation, ISIS, or Al-Qaeda, or al Qaeda, if you will. Uh, this time, in the case of Jerry Drake Varnell, the 23-year-old diagnosed schizophrenic accused of attempting to bomb a bank, the FBI fomented terror from a right-wing dialogue. In June, meeting with the agent, according to the FBI documents, Varnell described himself as a believer in three-percenter ideology, the right-wing group claiming to be committed to stand against and exposing corruption and injustice. Oh, how horrible. 
exposing corruption and injustice. Oh, can't be having that. According to the federal documents, Varnell drove what he believed was a stolen van containing a 1,000-pound ammonium nitrate bomb on Saturday morning to blow up an Oklahoma City bank. Vile, indeed. However, if we backtrack just a bit to when the FBI began grooming their would-be right-wing militia terrorist, the vileness comes directly from your U.S. government. The FBI knew he was schizophrenic. Varnell's parents declared on Wednesday in an open letter bravely published by News OK. Underneath his condition, he is a sweethearted person, and we are extremely shocked that this event has happened. However, what truly has us flabbergasted is the fact that the FBI knew he was schizophrenic. The state of Oklahoma found him mentally incompetent, and we, his parents, ha have legal guardianship over him by the court. These documents are sealed from the public, which is why no news media outlet has been able to obtain them. The FBI clearly knew that he was schizophrenic because they have gathered every ounce of information on him. Yes, they have. Oh man, I tell you, <laughs> it's it's so it's so it's so disturbing. But this is how they do this. Uh, anyway, yeah, they knowingly continued to groom him, despite the immoral implications. When they began grooming him, according to the FBI, to the family, the FBI knew that Varnell was declared mentally unfit to live by himself, and that he was a paranoid schizophrenic. Without their criminal informant. The FBI tactics uh, playing mind games with this vulnerable man, the idea of him committing an act of terror would never have materialized. Never have materialized. What the public should be looking at is the fact at, at is the fact that the FBI gave our son the means to make this happen. He has no job, no money, no vehicle, no driver's license due to the fact that he's schizophrenic. And we, his parents, do everything we can possible to keep him safe and, and functional. He has suffered through countless serious, full-blown schizophrenic delusional episodes, and he has been put in numerous mental hospitals since he was 16 years old. The FBI came and picked him up from our home. They gave him a vehicle, gave him a fake bomb, and every means to make this happen, none of which he had access to on his own. The parents noted that during the setup, they suspected something was going on, and Jerry's father told the informant to stay away from their son. However, according to the parents, the informant continued to sneak into our residence, the FBI paid him to continue this operation, and I believe they have cleared his cl criminal record. Because they knew Varnell had severe mental disabilities, the FBI should have stopped their plans to do this and immediately sought an option of hospitalization. However, they pressed on. Knowing a sane person would likely never attempt to blow up a bank the FBI deliberately targeted a severely delusional and mentally ill person. This is wrong on so many levels. Will the, will the next mass murderer they groom come directly from a mental institution? I wouldn't be surprised. The FBI should have filed, con, uh, filed conspiracy on our son and had him committed in a mental institution. They should not have aided and abetted a paranoid schizophrenic to commit this act. There are many more facts that I will not make public that will support my son and the disturbing acts made by the FBI. I realize that many will say my son could have found another person to commit this act, yet any person that has access to the materials and this, the state of mind necessary to bomb a building would not have any need for a schizophrenic who has no resources to contribute. Clifford and Melanie Varnell, Jerry's parents, make a powerful point. No one, 
other than the FBI would have attempted to get a schizophrenic man with nothing to contribute to do their bidding as it most likely would be a futile effort. Unless you are the FBI looking for an easy patsy to keep fear alive. David Steele, a 20-year-old Marine Corps intelligence officer, the, the second highest ranking civilian in the U.S. Marine Corps intelligence, and former CIA clandestine services case officer, had this to say about these most unscrupulous operations. Most terrorists are false flag terrorists. Let me repeat that. Most terrorists are false flag flag terrorists or are created by our own security services in the u.s every single terrorist incident we have had uh, has been a false flag or has been an informant pushed on by the fbi in fact we now have a citizen uh, taking out restraining orders against fbi informants that are trying to incite terrorism we have become a lunatic asylum. And let me just tell you again, this guy that, that said this, he's not Joe Blow on the street. He's a 20-year Marine Corps intelligence officer, the second highest ranking civilian in the U.S. Marine Corps intelligence, and a former CIA clandestine services case officer. He knows what he's talking about as far as this part goes. <sighs> So whenever you see one of these things go down, bear in mind, this article and many others like it that are out there right now, it, it, it's, it's, uh, it's disturbing at a minimum. Disturbing at a minimum. This is the way they operate. This is, this is their pattern of doing things to be able to create new laws to control you tighter and tighter. It's disgusting. It's, it's, it's horrendous. All right. Let's talk about Facebook for a moment. And I'm talking about Facebook, but not just Facebook. This is a, a lot of those companies, but this one is specific to Facebook. Rob Works is quite correct. He points out that most terrorists wear badges and drive cars with red and blue lights. <laughs> that they do, my brother. <laughs> All right. From the courthousenews.com on July 24th. This year. Facebook to pay $5 billion penalty for privacy violations. And I know that sounds like a lot of money. $5 billion. That's about a day, maybe two days worth of their uh, income. <laughs> they don't really care. Five billion dollars, meh. <laughs> uh, social media giant Facebook will pay five billion dollars and adhere, right, right, like they're going to adhere to this, adhere to new privacy guidelines following a sweeping Federal Trade Commission investigation into the mishandling of personal user data. They are not going to adhere to this whatsoever. They're going to find newer, better ways of disguising what they're doing if they need to, or just buy, buy off the right FTC people. The fine is the largest in FTC history, but is just a fraction of the company's annual revenues. It pulled in nearly $56 billion last year alone. That number's way up, by the way. Uh, I don't know how they keep making more and more money, but they do. It's, it's crazy. Anyway, as part of the massive settlement, Facebook CEO Mark Zuckerberg will have to certify compliance with new privacy programs. The company did not admit to any wrongdoing under the deal. <laughs> no, we didn't do anything wrong. Here's $5 billion. Yeah, no, we're, we're fine. We're, we're all good. Here, here's $5 billion. Yeah, right. The extent of the company's alleged misdeeds was broken down in a civil lawsuit filed by the federal government Wednesday morning, which was settled by the FTC deal. To encourage users to share information voluntarily, which they all seem to do, 
Facebook promises users that they can control the privacy of their information right <laughs> through through Facebook's privacy settings. And if you believe that, I got a nice little chunk of land down in Southern Florida. I'll sell you, I'll give you a bargain price on that, boy. Let me tell you, it is just primo land. Yeah. Anyway, the complaint states, however, uh, through at least June 2018, Facebook subverted user privacy choices to serve its own business interests. And again, they all do it. It's not like, yeah, you know, th this this one is, is focusing directly on Facebook, but all your Google information from all of the various Google tools out there, you being the primary tool, um, <laughs> they, all, they all do it. They don't care about your privacy in any means whatsoever. Um, the fact that they even have a privacy policy surprises me uh, because... They know they're, they're, it's just a joke. It's just a huge thing. Anyway, the FTC specifically alleges that privacy violations occur occurred through the use of apps that can be installed by users. So you would go ahead and install these apps. You don't really check to see. You don't read through through the, the terms of service on those things. I mean, those, those terms of services are like 500 pages long, and it's all in legalese. And there's no way you would understand it if you read it. But you want to use it. It looks like a cool thing, and you click. Yeah, just just let me let me in there. Let me do that. I want I want in. <laughs> and when you do that, the the product that Facebook and, and others are selling is you. Is your private data. It's your information. Facebook's default settings were set so that Facebook would share with a third-party developer of an app, uh, user's app, not only the app user's data, but also the data of the app user's Facebook friends. So your friends are getting you stuck in there too, even if those affected friends had not themselves installed the app. The lawsuit states, in the wrong hands, which anybody else having your private information, to me, is in the wrong hands. Uh, user and affected friend data could be used for identity theft, phishing, fraud, and other harmful purposes, and it has been on many occasions. The $5 billion fine stems from an investigation into whether Facebook violated a 2012 agreement with government regulators that required the social media giant to get users' consent to share personal information in ways that go beyond their privacy settings. <laughs> privacy. Facebook. Those are two words that should never uh, be put together in the same sentence unless you're saying, if you're on Facebook, you have no privacy. Uh, but to say that you're getting any kind of privacy, regardless of whatever settings you make on Facebook, even after this $5 billion penalty, give me a break. It's nonsense. All right. Now, I don't know who you are, but I know you're out there. And I know it's not just one or two of you. I have stats that show me what type of browsers people are using when they come and visit my websites. I can tell how many people used Firefox or Chrome or, for some reason, Internet Explorer or Edge. Why are you using these things? They are terrible. They are the worst possible browsers. I mean, at some point in time, back in the day, 90s, early 2000s maybe, Internet Explorer was kind of required for some things. But it's not anymore. And people still use it, maybe because it comes as a default on your Windows operating systems. They still use it? I, 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 don't, I, don't, I don't get it. But on this website here, hey, Woodman, askwoody.com. <laughs> I don't think it's that same one. It's not our Woody. <laughs> Internet Explorer and Edge send the full URL of every page you visit to Microsoft. 
plus your unique account ID. This article posted J- July 22nd here by Woody. Um, <laughs> it says here, Edge apparently sends the full URL of pages you visit, uh, minus a f- pop, pop, few popular sites, to Microsoft. And in contrast to documentation, it includes your very non-anonymous account ID. It all has to do with the smart screen filter designed to keep you away from malicious sites. <laughs> well, that's their story. Uh, Chrome, Firefox, and Safari solved the phone home problem years ago with techniques that vet bad sites locally on your computer without leaving a huge trail leading right back to your door. Are people crazy still using these Internet Explorer and Edge browsers? You gotta be out of your mind. Oh no, but they they make things so pretty and they work directly with with Windows. Ugh. Stop it! <laughs> I don't really like telling people what to do, but really, stop it. Stop using those browsers. You can't trust Microsoft any more than you can trust Facebook or Google or Apple. Uh, the, they all mean you harm in many ways, and, and, and just. You know, the information's out there. This is not what you want. Oh, speaking of Apple, this article posted July 28th there on ZeroEdge.com. And I know we've talked about similar things, I think, with Alexa before. And uh, and maybe the uh, Google one. What's the Google one? No, Google Voice. I, I don't know what the hell it's called. Um, the Google one. <laughs> Siri, the Apple one, regularly listens in on your sexual encounters. Oh, baby, give me that. Siri wants it hard. <laughs> Apple insists only for a few seconds, but, you know, in some people's case, a few seconds may be more, may, may cover the whole sexual encounter. <laughs> oh god should it come as any surprise no no obviously not and yet the details are shocking and outrageous a whistleblower working for apple has revealed to the guardian that its popular voice activated spying device or uh, helpful virtual assistant siri now in millions of households regularly records people having sex and captures other countless invasive moments which it promptly sends to Apple contractors for their listening pleasure. I mean, uh, quality control. Apple contractors regularly hear confidential medical information, drug deals, and recordings of couples having sex as part of their job providing quality control or grading the company's Siri voice assistance assistant uh, the Guardian has learned. We've long pointed out that according to Amazon's Alexa's terms of use, the company collects and stores most of what you say to Alexa. Also, most of what you don't say to Alexa that you're just talking. Most It should just say most of what you say and leave the two Alexa part off. Or perhaps when you groan. Including the geolocation of the product along with your voice instructions. However, what's not disclosed, at least not well known up to this point, is that a small proportion of all Siri recordings of what consumers thought were private settings are actually forwarded directly to Apple contractors around the world, according to a new report. Supposedly, this is to ensure Siri is responding properly. Like asking uh, while you're in the middle of doing your deal, hey, you need some more lube? (laughs) And can continue to distinguish dictation. Apple says, according to The Guardian, the data is used to help Siri get off, I mean, help Siri, uh, oh, and dictation. Understand, you better recognize what you say. 
but an anonymous company insider and whistleblower told The Guardian there have been countless instances of recordings featuring private discussions between doctors and patients, business deals, seemingly criminal dealings, sexual encounters, and so on and so forth. These recordings are accompanied by user data showing location, contact details, and app data. Oh, and by the way, if your camera is available. <laughs> yeah, baby. <laughs> you may find you may find your yourself posted on an internet site somewhere doing stuff you were doing without knowing that you were being posted. Just trust us, Apple appears to be saying. Most of what can be deemed sensitive data is captured through the so-called accidental activations by trigger words such as oh and uh and oh baby <laughs> according to the report I, I i added those words in uh with the highest rates of such occurrences via the apple watch and homepod smart speakers the regularity of accidental triggers on the watch is incredibly high the company whistleblower exp explained the watch can record some snippets that will be 30 seconds. Not that long, but you can gather the good idea of what's going on. Uh, the insider continued, you can definitely hear a doctor and patient talking about the medical history of a patient, or you'd hear someone maybe with a car engine background noise. Uh, you can't say definitely it's a drug deal, but you can be pretty sure. And you'd hear, like, people engaging in sexual acts that are accidentally recorded on the pod or the watch. <laughs> now, this might be good if you, you're, like, one of the people that likes to be watched <laughs> by your watch. I don't know. <laughs> do, you, do all your grunting in public. <laughs> If you are one of those people, there's probably a site where you can go and, and, and have that stuff on live video and get paid for it, rather than having Apple or Google or Amazon take that stuff from you for free. I mean, come on. <laughs> now, while I am for the intent behind this next uh, bill that's on this next article here, I am against the fact that there would be a bill to do it. I would say people just quit going to sites that do this and that would be the way to go. But they want to control and regulate and manipulate and force uh, their, their ideas down everybody's throat regardless. So this here on TheVerge.com posted July 30th by Marquina Kelly. New bill would ban autoplay videos and endless scrolling. I hate autoplay videos. I don't like the endless scrolling sites. I want one story per page. I don't want to have a story show up to be the next story, the next story, the next story. I, I don't go beyond the story that I went to look at. And if there's an autoplay video, I stop it immediately. Sometimes I quit going to sites that, that do that because it annoys me so much. I don't want to have that stuff going on on the sites I go to. But I also do not want this to be legislated. However, that's the plan. Snap streaks, YouTube autoplay, and endless scrolling are coming under fire from a new bill, which is sponsored by Senator Josh Haley uh, out of Missouri, targeting the tech, tech industry's addictive design. Holly's Social Media Addiction Reduction Technology Act, or the SMART Act, would ban these features that uh, keep to work users on platforms longer, along with others like snap streaks. I don't even know what the hell a snap streak is. Uh, that incentivize the continued use of these products. If approved, the Federal Trade Commission and Health and Human Services what do they got to do with it? Could create similar rules that would expire after three years unless Congress codified them into law. 
Big Tech has embraced a business model of addiction, Hawley said. Too much of the innovation. See, I, I don't get addicted by those things, but maybe some people do. I don't know. Oh, hi, Diane Ransom, wherever you are. Welcome to RLM Radio. Vinny's a good guy, regardless of what people say. <laughs> Where was I? Social media companies deploy a host of tactics designed to manipulate users in ways that undermine their well-being. Josh Golan, executive director of Campaign for a Commercial Free Childhood, said. Commercial Free Childhood? Right. Anyway. <laughs> uh, yeah, you know, if, if these things, if you go to a site and they have these kind of things, and you don't like them, just don't go to those sites. And if you do like them, then you like them. And it's not necessarily a addictive thing. Maybe it is. I don't know. I, I don't have that kind of thing going on in my brain where I could be addicted to such stuff. Um, but I, I may, I, maybe, I guess some people do. I don't know. Uh, so anyway, try just, just uh, we don't we don't need legislation for this or pretty much anything else. I'm I'm pretty much against all legislation for all purposes, and uh, would like to see uh, one piece of legislation that wipes out all other legislation. That would be the legislation I'd be looking for. All right, all laws currently on the books are gone. Boom. <laughs> here's the here's the new laws. You can't steal. You can't kill. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty much it. <laughs> that's it. Oh, yeah, we already had those laws. Yeah, but yeah, they got all specified and closed in. And da, 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 da. All right. So, oh, we're in August now, huh? Okay. On the Reason website here from August 5th, 2019, Trump, the Trumpster, calls for linking new gun control legislation to immigration reform. The president offers the worst of both worlds. The political reaction to violent tragedies is rarely good for individual liberty. Well, government is rarely good for individual liberty. Wait, it's never good for individual liberty. Government is actually the opposite of individual liberty. <laughs> All right. Anyway, Trump's response to the weekend's mass shootings in Texas and Ohio is no exception. On Monday morning, uh, so I don't know if any of this has changed since then, but maybe some of it has, I don't know. Anyway, on Monday morning, Trump tweeted that he would be willing to support more restrictions on gun ownership and suggested linking those restrictions to congressional action on immigration. Which again, really? We cannot let those killed in El Paso, Texas and Dayton, Ohio die in vain, wrote the president. Republicans and Democrats must come together and really screw the American people. Oh, I mean, and get strong background checks. No, don't need that. Perhaps marrying this legislation with a desperately needed immigration reform. We have something good, if not great, huge, come out of these two tragic events. And let me just say this about background checks. If you are a fan of the government and you do like the Constitution of the United States of America and you've read the Second Amendment of that there Constitution, it says right in there that your right to keep and bear arms shall not be in Infringed. Well, a background check is an infringement. You say, why? I went in there. I took my background check. I was fine. Well, maybe you were. But maybe the next guy's not. What are they checking for? Why are they checking for it? Shall not be infringed. Doesn't say shall not be infringed unless you want to keep your hands out of people that were felons. Felons for what? Why? Why do you want to keep the, the, the guns out of their hands? What right is it of yours to prevent that person, assuming they're no longer in prison, 
they're out out there on their own. Don't they need to protect themselves as much as you do? Don't they need to fight a tyrannical government as much as you do? Well, what if they're crazy? Who says they're crazy? What makes them crazy? The psychiatrists? You gonna believe those people? They're they're the ones that are gonna determine if somebody's crazy or not? I mean, if somebody's that crazy, probably they're not out on the street. Probably. And if they are out on the street and you think they're gonna harm somebody, well, you better check and see which FBI agent is setting them up to go out and do that harm. You might want to check into the MK Ultra setup system. There's a lot of things, but uh, I, I it says shall not be infringed. There is no else. There is no unless these conditions apply. No. So what is the purpose of these background checks? None. All right. <laughs> In a brief speech Monday morning, Trump repeated his op- openness to more gun control measures, but avoided any mention of immigration. Now is the time to set destructive partisanship aside, said Trump. His remarks called for more red flag laws, which means that, uh, you know, somebody that just doesn't like you for some reason can call you in as a red flag thing and they'll come and take your guns and you have to go through a massive process to try and attempt to get those back, which is probably not going to happen. Anyway, which allows police to confiscate weapons from law-abiding gun gun owners if they are deemed potential threats. Deemed by who? The president also called on social media companies to develop tools to flag likely mass shooters. So the social media now needs to be able to read your mind. And yes, they are working on doing exactly that. Some of them believe they can already read your mind. Yeah, they do. They think they can predict what your next actions are going to be. And in many cases, they're actually right. A lot of people are very predictable out there. But uh, would they have gotten any of the quote-unquote mass shooters that have occurred in the last 20 years or so? I'm going to say no. Uh, which takes you back to prior to the the, uh, social media era. This is not the first time that Trump has floated the idea of more gun control regulations in the wake of mass shootings. Very reactive he is, very reactive. Uh, His administration banned bump stocks, which people say, I don't don't use a bump stock, I don't know if he uses a bump stock. Well, the thing is, you really don't need a bump stock to do what the bump stock does. Uh, But the fact is, it's still a regulation applied to guns, and it should not be there. Trump isn't the only conservative voice. He's conservative? All right, if you say so. Uh, calling for additional gun control measures either. The conserv- yeah, yeah, Just look at the spending bills that, he's, that he has signed. Tell me that's conservative. <laughs> anyway, the conservative New York Post, which again... Uh, very marginally conservative, if at all. Uh, editorial board called for a ban on weapons of war. So they consider uh, your semi automatic weapon rifle to be a weapon of war. It's not a weapon of war. The assault weapons ban is aimed at the likes of the El Paso shooter, but he didn't have an assault weapon. He may have had an AR-15, but that's not an assault weapon. <laughs> so, yeah, you you know, you, you Trump followers, and I, I know who you are, because you, you, you make yourself known. And I appreciate the facts that you do make yourself known, you know. Uh, it, it's good for us to know who you are. Because when something like this happens, do, do you not take take a little step back and say wait a minute that's not what i voted for this guy for he said he wasn't gonna do this and there he is doing it and this other stuff he said he was going to do i I don't see hillary in no chains or in a cage 
I do remember lock her up, lock her up is one of his main things. Yeah, yeah, I don't see that happening. Anyway, there's that. <laughs> All right. <laughs> The technology review.com here website posted on uh, when the hell was this posted? It's from MIT, July 24th. All right. This seems cool. I don't know. I'd like, like to try one anyway. The VR illusion that makes you think you have a spider's body. Psychologists have long toyed with the illusion that lets you feel ownership of a different body even one that is not human. It could revolutionize gaming. Oh, it could revolutionize far more than gaming. But let me tell you, it's pretty cool. <laughs> the rubber hand illusion is an impressive dinner party trick. It persuaded an unwitting guest that a rubber hand on the table is actually his or her own. For the victim, the illusion is rapid, dramatic, and convincing. The person feels the hand and experiences it being stroked. The illusion, oh, that's right. This is one of those sites that doesn't let me read the whole story. Uh, the, uh, the illusion reveals how easily the human brain can be tricked into feeling ownership of otherwise inanimate objects. Psychologists have repeated the illusion, not just with limbs, but with entire bodies. Take part in one of these experiments and you could have the remarkable illusion of having a different body form, perhaps one of the opposite sex or even a non-human animal such as a gorilla. For a long time, researchers believed that the full body illusions could be triggered in special, specially controlled laboratory conditions using VR equipment. But recently, they have found ways to trigger the illusion more easily. And that raises some interesting questions. Researchers would dearly love to know how extreme body shapes can become before the human brain rejects them. Could a human own the body of a spider, a lobster, or even a table, for example? Given the ease with which uh, the, you know, these illusions can be triggered, how widespread can this type of illusion become? Suppose you wanted to be like a, an eagle and be soaring out there in the sky, just checking stuff out. That'd be pretty cool, huh? Maybe you want to be a wolf and, and you're going after a rabbit or something. Who knows? I don't know what do wolves go after. <laughs> or just checking out the, the forest as a wolf, just cruising along. Uh, that would be pretty awesome. All right. Today, we get a partial answer thanks to uh, the work of Andrei Krekov and colleagues at the University of Duesenberg, uh, Essen in Germany. These guys have compared the way humans take ownership of uh, human versus non-human bodies, such as those of tigers, bats, and spiders. They say in certain situations, the experience of owning a non-humanoid body is more convincing than that of owning a humanoid body. And this result paves the way for virtual body ownership to play a greater role in applications such as training, education, and, of course, video gaming, where the potential is significant. Uh, for some background, the rubber hand illusion begins by covering a person's real hand and placing it in a rubber hand next to it. The subject can see the rubber hand, but not their real hand. The illusionist then lightly touches or strokes both hands in the same place at the, in the same way. Um, oh, I lost my spot there. Where'd it go? Uh, there, the subject seeing the rubber hand stroke feels the sensation as if it were their real hand, which is also being stroked, but in a way they cannot see. In that instant, the illusion is created. The subject feels that the, the rubber hand is part of their own body. Many people find this a surprising and dramatic sensation. The illusion was first described in the 1990s, but since then, researchers have gone much further. The next generation of experiments used early forms of virtual reality, 
The subject wears the VR headset and looks down at their body and finds it is that of a gorilla, for example. I do that pretty much daily without any VR equipment. <laughs> While the subject watches, the virtual body receives a poke in the chest. But at the same time, the subject's real body is poked in the same place. In that instant, the illusion is created. The subject feels ownership of the virtual body. Uh, there's limitations to the techniques, uh, which were emer- immediately clear. The illusion requires visual and tactile stimu- stimuli simultaneously. That's straightforward for a rubber hand, but comes more difficult for an entire body, particularly when the virtual limbs start moving in a way that the subject's real body does not match. Anyway, I'll let you read the rest of this for yourself. It, it goes on for quite a while here, and it's fairly in-depth, but uh, it sounds kind of neat. Uh, but they need to get rid of that part where, where, where you have to actually feel the same thing that the that the artificial body is feeling. They actually need to get rid of the artificial body altogether, and make it just so that when you enter into the VR realm, that whatever character type of thing that you uh, uh, morph into in that that you can see and uh, feel and smell and hear everything that the virtual world is allowing you to do. That's where they really need to get with this, but uh, this still fairly significant. So there's that. (laughs) All right. Now, some, some States, many States have, have uh, legalized, which, uh, which I'm not a fan of, legalized marijuana. They call it recreational marijuana, but whatever. Why is it recreational? Why does it just say legalizing marijuana? Um, And uh, the fact that they're legalizing it means that they will regulate, control, tax, and uh, limit uh, your your access to it, uh, how much you can have, and such things like that. But even in that limited capacity, the state of Michigan, in the state of Michigan, more than 500 communities opt out of recreational marijuana sales. Now, this is posted on July 24th here uh, by Payne Lovers on the Detroit News. So it says, despite Michigan, Michiganers, Michiganians, legalizing recreational marijuana by 400,000 votes last fall. Oh yeah, vote harder. It's really going to matter. Hundreds of cities, villages, and townships across the state have decided to say, screw you. We're not allowing any recreational marijuana distributors or storefronts in our in our towns. As of Wednesday, 522 of the state's 1,773 communities have opted out of the Michigan Regulation and Taxation of Marijuana Act. You see, they put taxation right there in the, in the title of the act. Municipalities that opt out of the licensed facilities portion of the act notified the Michigan Department of Regulatory Affairs, which is responsible for oversight of the medical and recreational marijuana. While some residential communities like Gross Point Shores opted out due to a lack of retail space, right, that's the reason, officials in larger communities say they are taking a more cautious approach to the new law. Livonia is struggling to interpret what the law permits and fear taking action before more state regulations are implemented. More regulations, more, more. We can never have enough regulations. The Livonia City Council unanimously voted to opt out of the licensed facilities portion of the marijuana law in December. City officials did not want residents investing in marijuana businesses while the city decides on its next move. Yeah, that's it. No, they just they just want to keep harassing people, that's all. So, um... Uh, well, <laughs> yeah, $100,000 for a fucking grow permit. Yeah, exactly, Rob. I, I, you know, Jesus. These people are nuts thinking that this is a good idea, but... Uh, it's better that than, than having people arrested for smoking a joint. Um, not that they still won't do that to you. 
but whatever, man. All right. Let me get a second. Let me sip of water. Most of you probably know what nitrates are, right? Uh, nitrates are the reason a lot of people won't eat things like bacon or hot dogs is they say, oh, they're loaded with nitrates. We can't have that. Well, you probably don't need to. <laughs> you're, pro you're probably getting a bunch of nitrates without any of that stuff. <laughs> From rnz.co.nz out of New Zealand there. Health expert renews call for study on nitrates in drinking water. Ah. A leading public health scholar warns 50 people uh, could be dying from bowel cancer every year because of nitrate levels in their drinking water. The estimate is based on a major U.S. study showing nitrate pollution <laughs> Nitrate pollution may be causing up to 12,500 cancer cases there annually. Nitrates get into the water supply through the use of fertilizer and effluent from farm animals. And because it's a high soluble chemical and not removed by normal filtration, it can seep deep into the aquifers. All you well users, yeah. A Danish study last year found a link between nitrates and colorectal cancer at pollution levels much lower than New Zealand currently allows in their drinking water. Otago Uni Prof University professor of public health, Michael Baker, said the United States study proved that what the Danes found was not a one-off. Not at all. It's much more comprehensive because what they did, what's called a meta-analysis, where they took the results of the Danish study and another seven high-quality studies to come up with what they call a very good dose-response relationship. We are working with a regulatory level, which is hopelessly out of date, I mean, it was generated decades ago. It's still used internationally, but it's about protecting babies from blue baby syndrome, not about cancer risk. The professor said, uh, based on the numbers in the study, 50 people could be dying from bowel cancer every year in New Zealand because of the nitrates in their drinking water. Professor Baker said a New, e New Zealand study uh, link, looking at the link between nitrate pollution and cancer was long overdue. Our water is getting a lot more contaminated because of our absolute love affair with nitrate fertilizers, he said. Other, uh, the other thing that has happened is that we've got knowledge about the danger level for human disease, and it is much lower than the current threshold value. So I think we need to take that into account when we do further testing. Now, I don't know, I don't, I don't think, uh, I, I'm not sure whether or not the filters that I have or maybe the filters that you have remove these nitrates from the water. I, I'd have to go back and look. I, I, and uh, I, I, my, my filter needs to be replaced anyway. Um, but uh, may, maybe, maybe the Berkey's to remove the nitrates. I don't know. Um, but, uh, uh, it don't matter. I eat hot dogs. I, I eat bacon. <laughs> and, and and again, as I'd mentioned prior, <coughs> there's no need for the nitrates to be in the bacon or the hot dogs. It's not helping the food whatsoever. <laughs> All right. Well, we'll just close out quickly with this article here because... Well, I really like the tag that I that I that I created for it. It's from RT, posted on uh, July thirty first here. Um, <laughs> Florida mosquitoes are carrying a deadly brain infecting virus. Huh? Well, that could explain something. I mean, if you ever read the news coming out of Florida, if you ever read the news coming out of Florida. <laughs> this may explain a thing or two. <laughs> Just kidding. 
We love you Floridians, really. Some of our best friends are Floridians. Kate and Sock Puppet and Free Enslaved and, yeah, others. Anyway, a rare brain-infecting virus has been detected in Orange County, Florida, and residents have been advised to avoid mosquitoes. Uh, don't they normally, anyway? Doesn't every resident try to avoid mosquitoes? <laughs> so try to avoid mosquitoes, which carry the deadly disease. Uh, the Florida Department of Health in Orange County released a public advisory warning of mosquito-borne brain-infecting eastern equine encephalitis virus. The EEEV infection has been found in the area. So, yeah, try to avoid these deadly mosquitoes if you're down there in Florida because, yeah, they're, they're, not, they're not good. <laughs> oh man all right thanks folks everybody for tuning in here on the uh grim leftovers program i'll be back again next monday with another edition of the grim leftovers uh but uh what's coming up wow i don't even know oh yeah don is down there too um um I don't know. Check the schedule on Real Radio Media. We need more shows. Anybody wants to do a show, let me know. I'll, I'll set you up, get you going to do a show. We lost, we lost Grammy. We lost Flash. That, that's like several shows that we lost uh, for the average week here. So, um, yeah, we need more shows. Come on over. Real Liberty Media. Do a show. <laughs> All right. Well, we'll talk to y'all later. Have a great week. Uh, thanks once again to everybody that tuned in. Peace.